Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting edition of Biographic, the show in which I, Matt, the Game Boy, I'll take you through the highs and lows of the Game Boy library, one cart at a time. This week we'll be looking at a Konami puzzle shooter hybrid, it's Quarth. As we all know, the Nintendo Game Boy is no stranger to puzzle games. With a phenomenal reception of Tetris, developers scramble to get similar titles onto the Famicom and everybody's favourite black and white handheld to lighten the burdens of gamers' wallets worldwide. There were many who tried, leading to some breathtaking titles, a few lacklustre efforts and a lot of games who fall somewhere in between. However, one of the best puzzle titles on the Game Boy was made by taking the fundamentals of Tetris and adding to the mix the gameplay of a fixed shooter. That game is Konami's Quaff. It was a simple concept, really. Like Tetris, blocks fall from the top of the screen, but unlike Alexei Pachiknov's classic, the player wasn't charged with positioning them to create in clear lines. Instead, you took control of one of six block-busting spaceships in order to defend against these quick-falling quadrilaterals, not by destroying them, but instead by making them into symmetrical squares or rectangles, which then add to the player's score. If you're feeling really flashy, you don't even have to fill in the shape. You can instead simply fire out a frame and it'll disappear. It's a very simple concept, but it really works. Taking more gameplay-wise from fixed shooters like Space Invaders than Tetris, Quaff also employs a level system where the player must not only meet a set number of blocks to be erased, but must also survive the stage itself. This can be tricky, as while the game starts easy enough, it soon builds up in speed. While there are only technically 9 stages to quaff, there are initially 3 levels of difficulty to test your block busting prowess. But after defeating stage 3 9, you can go on to a 4th and even 5th level of difficulty and, in all essence, beat the game. But as I didn't have the reflexes to even clear the 3rd level, I assume that it's not for the faint hearted. The game does offer a power-up system to help the player out of the tighter pinches, with abilities like speeding up your fire rate, clearing the screen, or producing other random effects that affect play. These can be earned by clearing larger spaces, but naturally bring in a risk-reward factor, especially on the later levels. Visually, there's not that much going on in Quarth other than the game's ship design. As I previously mentioned, there are a total of six unique ships on offer here, including the Square Mark IV, the Ernest Beetle, Ko Babarat, Ding the Third, Armament Pearl, and Fickle Saviour, who in no way, shape, or form looks at all phallic. Either way, these are names that I can only assume sound better in Japanese, but at least aesthetically, character designer Kochi Kimura did a pretty good job in my opinion. Gameplay-wise, your ship choice has very little to no influence on the gameplay, other than changing how falling blocks look, but at least it offers a little variety in the game's otherwise bland levels. Where the game truly stands out, however, is its sound design. The music in Quarth is incredible, which is of course true of most Konami titles of the age. The music appears to be randomised, but means that in multiple levels you won't hear the same song twice. Which is a blessing, because it's all really good stuff. While Hidehiro Fanucci and Nori Hanzawa are credited on the Game Boy version, judging by their other works at Konami, which is mostly porting Famicom soundtracks to the Game Boy, it seems very unlikely that they were responsible for the game's original score. Likewise, the game's programmers Hideo Odeo and Yoshi Nakaishi seem to get their start on Game Boy ports of classic shmups like Pop and Twimby and Parodius. Hideo, at least, would continue working on shooters such as Axley, Sexy Parodius, and Gradius Deluxe Package later down the line. Strangely, Quarth seems to be one of the few games sold in Europe with a USA cart, despite having its own manual and box for at least the German region. So, don't get spooked if you're an EU purist looking out for an NOE cart, as I'm pretty sure one doesn't exist. Fortunately, US versions of the game are very cheap to come by, and can come with the bonus of an English manual if that's your bag. And that's all there really is to say about Quaff. But I would argue that its beauty lies in this simplicity. 
it's a perfect pick up and play game that is not only easy to understand, but is a lot of fun to play. While it would have been nice to see more variety in the ships, such as them affecting the rate of fire, this is a minor niggle in an otherwise tight game. If you like games like Tetris or Quix, then be sure to add Quarth to your Game Boy Library ASAP. And that brings us to the end of another biographic, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please subscribe if you haven't already and encourage others you think may like the channel to do so as this is how the channel gets around. You can, of course, check out some more of our biographic videos where I look at the highs and lows of the Game Boy Library every Friday, one cart at a time. You can also check out some of our Boy Curious videos where I look at bootlegs and oddities for the Nintendo Game Boy and Color. And you can also check out some of our All the Glory videos where I complete the game through, cut out all my deaths, leaving you with none of the faff, but all of the glory. Until next week, game boys and girls, it's goodbye from me. Game on.